addition. We're seeing some of the common solutions being more um, established as well. On the side of Eric's team, you have a Whimsicott um, with Encore. It also has Sunny Day in case you lose that sun and you still really want it. Um, and Rhyperior with Lightning Rod. So the, That's interesting. Yeah, the prominence of electric type moves um, being some of the more attack based typings some of the most attack based typings in this format right now is electric and ice oh, here we are both leads yes. gonna be Coridon with the auric compulse airy very interesting i think the only um, pokemon that might survive this lead is Coridon. Exactly. <laughs> so uh it is very fairly uh, favorable you also have the ogre pond next to the uh Karyodon on the side of Brayden, but when they're really getting down to brass tacks, also that Ogre Pond is running the fire typing, so it should be able to make use of this fire, um, like the sun, but the problem is all of these Pokemon resist fire <laughs> damage. Exactly. An interesting choice to make here right now. Both Karyodons are being threatened by each other by the dragon coverage, so there's a lot of pressure to try and Terra to get that edge over out on your opponent. So that's what we're seeing here in the first <laughs> turn being committed by Brayden. And they're both fire Terra types as well, so we might see a field full of fire type Pokemon. <laughs> and uh, we're gonna see the spike shield come up from the Ogre Pond just to catch any potential tech moves coming out. The eruption is gonna get committed. It's going to get blocked, of course, by the Ogre Pond, but it's still gonna hit the opposing Coridon for pretty decent damage, all things considered. A Coridon is no slouch in the special department field. The collision course. How much will that do against Terra Fire? Wow, almost knocks it out. Almost K knocks it out, and that's not even uh, effective against it. Breaking Swipe, I really like the move usage here. Um, it's gonna be super effective against Coridon, and it's also gonna reduce the physical damage that's gonna come out from it as well. Unfortunately, Typhlosion is primarily gonna be using special attacks right now because it's overheat and eruption. Uh, but still, it's uh, it's a good move. It's gonna do enough damage to at least threaten them with one more hit from any other move. Ogre Pond's gonna get switched out, and next up, we're probably gonna see the debut of the Ferrigarath. Interested to see what he's gonna try to accomplish with that one here. I think he, I don't think he wants the Trick Room just yet, but actually, I think he does actually, because this Coridon is on its last legs here. Gonna commit the Protect. The Eruption comes out once again. Getting protected, this Frugiraf is going to have to tank an eruption in sun, and it does. That is one tanky Pokemon. Yeah. With the collision course, he read the protect, still going to hit, and even through not very effective miss, that takes it out. That is going to be massive. The Furigraph is already out, but thanks to the reduced damage from the Eruption, since it's lower HP, it's not going to be enough to knock it out immediately, but it is still going to fall regardless. I just realized that it's not even not very effective because of the normal typing. Oh, it's a normal. I thought it was yeah. Psychic. Interesting. It is Psychic. It's normal Psychic. Oh. The double type coverage removes that yes. resistance to fighting. Very good. It seems fighting type moves are actually pretty solid right now in this regulation, uh, especially with some of the more prominent threats we're seeing. Collision Course, just showing that, you know, Electro Drift isn't the only threatening signature move here, as well as uh, uh, a Glacial Lance. You don't need it to be a spread move for it to be threatening. It's a very powerful attack indeed. Um, fake Out, most likely going to be wow. the pick here. You want to utilize it as it's your first move. I'll flip the turn. Yeah, this is interesting. He likes this Trick Room because he's just ever so slightly slower than the enemy Coridon. But now Eric, reading that situation, is going to go for the switch out. And that Ooh. freaking swipe is going to reduce the attack of this Whimsicott, which is still going to sting at least. Actually, no, because it's a fairy type. It's not going to get hit by it at all. Um, and the eruption once again is going to come out. This Typhlosion is so low that it's not going to do. It's not going to one hit the uh, Rillaboo, but it is going to take down the Coridon over on Brayden's side. I'm sure he was prepared for this situation. This is just going to allow him basically to switch back in his uh, Ogre Pond. And while it is the case that Sun should be running out soon, this Ogre Pond is still going to be more than capable of dishing out some serious damage, especially against this Whimsicott. Yeah, this Ogre Pond going to be a big threat on this field, especially for this Ogre Pond. Sun is still up, so this Ivy Cudgel is going to do a lot of damage. This Tesplosion, this Eruption isn't as doing as much as it should be right now. So now, I think we're going to see a little bit of a switch up in the game plan. Let's see what Eric is going to do here. He's been playing this so well so far. Yeah, just getting all the right reads, using all the right leads. He's really playing at the peak. Uh, of really what you could be expecting in a move like this. And that's not to take anything away from Brayden, of course, making the best out of the situations that Eric's is putting him in and making some really smart um, moves. Again, really, of course, uh, uh, 
it is probably the best play to go for in that last turn, just let your Karadon go down, but it is a very important choice to make nonetheless, and just set yourself up for as much success as you can into the next turn. So Raging Bolt is going to be making its debut, and of course, thanks to that sun, it's going to be boosting special attack. Wow. Uh, I, it's very interesting how we're seeing things kind of turn out right now. I'll comment on a little bit here, but Raging Bolt is going to resist that thanks to his Dragon Typing, and of course, Moon Blast is going to hit Rillaboom as well. Ivy Cudgel is coming out, going to knock out the Whimsicott body. I believe it has Sash, which yes, that is a conventional move to equip on this Pokemon or item. So next up is probably going to get one last move up here. And if it's going to go for anything, it might go for Encore. Um, that wouldn't be the worst move to go for. Um, actually, hmm. Who else do you got? You have a Coridon in the back. Maybe Ooh, you do. The high that. horsepower is going to throw in that Raging Bolt. It's tanky enough to live one, but with the Ivy Cudgel being boosted by Sun as well, that's going to sting but quite a bit. Well, Tailwind coming out, though. Good with this boost. dying breath, it gets the Tailwind up for his team. <laughs> it what? might last another turn or so, too. The Weather Ball with the Sun, though, that's going to sting so much. And now, wow, down to one. This Ogre Pond has to take the 1v4. <laughs> But if any Pokemon could do it, it might be this Ogre Pond. Such a very flexible Pokemon. But of course, more than likely with Eric having every single one of his Pokemon available still, it would be pretty difficult to come back for a situation like this. He's got a few of them quite low, but I don't think this Ogre Pond is going to be able to do this. It's going to have to be an absolute mastery. Yes, yeah, so there's going to be a forfeit right there. Good class from Brayden there. Knowing that Eric was just so dominant in that game, he managed to play that one all the way to the end. And we didn't see, I like the flexibility from Eric's team. There's so many areas it can do and it has so much coverage. For sure, and again, that's what I'm really drawn to with this team as well. It feels like very often you'll have like two different kind of approaches to team building. That's one, is to go for your own game plan. Or two, is to build around the common game plan and try to beat that as well as possible. I feel like Eric's team does a very, very good job of satisfying both of those team building conditions, as well as still remaining flexible and allowing a lot of different opportunities to really excel in any match if you're being put in. Again, this is a situation where it's as close to a mirror match as you're going to see, really, where they're both running very similar leads, very similar kind of strategies, at least in the first couple of turns. The field was literally full of fire types in that first <laughs> turn. But still, with Eric's team, with the coverage he has, with the moves he has, all the different strategies he was able to pull out, he was able to really stretch that advantage as long as possible and turn into a victory. Yeah, and I think we're going to be seeing more and more Coridons. I know we oh, saw yeah. a lot of Calyrex yesterday, but, you know, now that people are figuring out that Calyrex very, very strong, big threat, I think mm. people are waking up to the idea of Coridon being a big threat. A lot of coverage on the side of Coridon. There's a few weaknesses, but Sun is just so much better right now, I mm -hmm. think, than the even the electric terrain from the Rhydon. Sure, I think it's stronger in a vacuum, but with so many field setters right now in the meta, it's a little bit dangerous to bring out Crydon. Another thing that I'm, another thing that I'm kind of considering is with that electric terrain, you don't really see the um, paradox on the future types really benefiting from the electric terrain very often. But just in that one, we saw Protosynthesis actually being relevant, um, which again you don't really see too often with Maridon. But Crydon setting that sun, sun is just so valuable. It's just so valuable, and you get so much off of it. But Eric Luong leading with that same two Pokemon, um, similar coming up from Brayden, but this time he's got the Ferrigarath um, right next to him instead. Yeah, with no follow me, Trickling. this Ferrigarath is going to be focused, I think, by everybody on the side of Eric. So a lot of threat. You just got to hope it's bulky enough to outlast an eruption and probably a collision course as well. What I would expect from the side of Raiden, and I think what he is going for there, I'm not, I didn't see what he selected. He might have gone for Sword Stance to just get himself some setup. I think he selected Trick Room on for he Okay, so he might be trying to get himself in a position where very similar to lead to what we saw in um, Brantley's game, right? You sacrifice your first turn. Oh, Terra, he's gonna Terra go fire. Terra fire, he Sun. wants to go for it. <laughs> so many things stacked on top of each other right Wow, now. it's very, very much like, yeah, fire in Sun with spread moves can do a lot of damage. Eruption, namely, is going to be devastating here. I wouldn't be surprised if you see a knockout, but no wow, Ferrigarath three. hanging Could have been on a low roll as well. Collision Course is actually going to get committed onto the opposing Coridon. He just wants to get it low, and it's actually going to survive on one <laughs> HP. So we're looking at one to three here. Both of these Pokemon just hang on by thread. Um, 
very interesting. The tr this Choice Scarf just being such a very valuable item on this Typhlosion, but now with uh, Trick Room up, with the Helping Hand Breaking Swipe, maybe we could see something. Yeah, with the Sword Stance as well, it could take down the I think Garidon. it actually might. And then the next turn, right? That I Eruption's mean, not going to be doing as much as it used to, but they're still so low at 1 in 3 HP, respectively. I think this is the last turn we're going to see from these two leads on the side of Brayden. Unless... Unless Eric brought out Rhyperior, he's not going to get to Axe first next turn. So he's probably going to be... Oh, we okay. see the switch. You might be right. Maybe? Let's see. Whimsicott. So to it does have that Focus Sash. Swipe. It has the Focus Sash. It's going to be immune to the Breaking Swipe. Uh, so even if it gets hit by something here. So yeah, it's just going to completely be fine this turn. And does Crydon have Protect? Yes, it does. So he's going to Protect There it this is. Turn. Wow. Perfect Great pivot. read by Eric. Perfect pivot. Great read. Breaking Swipe is going to be completely blocked out. The Fairy Typing really coming in clutch off of this Whimsicott. And now what this Whimsicott's more than likely going to do is... I'm not sure. There's so many things that could be beneficial. You don't... You probably don't want to set up a Tailwind right now. Moonblast... I mean, it's... it's you're going to be baiting out the double commit from both of the Pokemon because neither of them have coverage moves. Actually, no, I think Frigoraph has Hyper Voice. So you could bank on... I don't know, this is just such a tough there's, call. Yeah, there's so many <laughs> tough calls to make here. Breaking swipe, but it doesn't hit... Ah. Britain is in a really good position to do one devastating move, but Eric just has so many defensive options at Ooh. his hands right now, and there's the Terra. I think that's a Terra Fire? Yeah, that's a Terra Fire onto the Coridon. Mm. Helping hand of his own. There's no cover, or there's no spread moves on the Whimsicott either, so... Both of these players really just want to try to maximize their spread as much as possible, but they don't have spread. Um, outside of the uh, the breaking swipe. Oh, he's actually going to go for the drain punch. Wow, that's yeah, helping KO. hand. That's, that's amazing. And drain punch going to get him. Wow, that's a lot of that's HP. Good. That's good damage right there. I didn't realize that this uh, <laughs> that this uh, Karadon actually had that drain punch. Very versatile, flexible Pokemon, but the Moonblast is going to come out, and thanks to the wow. Terra, it's going to stick through. Absolutely amazing play from Britain. He is now controlling the pace of this game. Raging Bolt out. Going to use that Protosynthesis here. Get a little bit of boost, but is that enough to try and take down this Coridon? You need to try and take down at least one of these strong opponents here, because this Farigraph is just going to be an absolutely strong support it going forward. does have Thunderclap, though. The priority move here. If it's basically Electric-type Sucker Punch, if your opponent uses an attacking move, you're going to go before and hit them first. Uh, but... Of course, your opponent probably going to be assuming that's the play you're going to go for. Can you expect them to go for something different? So that's going to be the first uh, helping hand. That's a priority move. But Draco Meteor. Wow. It's uh, slower. It's slower? I guess it is. And so it's going to get hit by that Draco Meteor. It's going to go down immediately. That we've seen that Thunderclap. Coridon is now out of the game here. Eric. He knows his numbers. He's crunching them. He knows who's slower than the uh, opponent here. And Moonblast probably going to take down this Furgraph. I don't even know why I said probably. Definitely got 3 <laughs> HP, right? And now uh, Brayden down to his last two Pokemon versus Eric's three here. Ooh, not bad last two to not have, though, in this <laughs> not scenario. We have the Ogre Pond. That's going to be a big threat on the Wimscott. This Urshifu going to be a big threat as well. But now... As this Trick Room is going to peter out in just a few more turns, I think we're going to see a Tailwind come up. Potentially. Whimsicott still hasn't taken any damage, so you're guaranteed to get at least one more turn of usage out of this Pokemon. Um, Raging Bolt, however, still at full HP, running with Special Vest, or um, an Assault Vest. Interestingly enough, that's not really going to matter much here, because we have two <laughs> physical attackers. Again, it's very uncommon. You see the physical attacks be very prevalent. A lot of... Pokemon uh, right now in this format are heavy special attackers, but of course Urshifu definitely on the opposite side of that spectrum. He's going to want to hit first and hit hard. Follow Me is going to come out, however, to absorb any moves that are going to be threatening his Urshifu, and that's going to be the Weather Ball absorbed by this Fire-type Ogre Pond, of course, so it's not going to be doing too... What? what? 
takes down the Ogre Pond in the sun. And now, what? it looks like Brayden is down to just one last Pokemon. Wicked Blow hitting, doing a good amount of damage. But a crit taking him down is absolutely massive. Focus Sash brings him down to one. But at the end of the day, it's looking like Eric has won that off of a crit. Oh, I forgot it's still Grass type. Ogre Pond yes. is fire and grass. So because of this, the sun and the crit and the and boosted special, you're That's right. definitely gonna be oh, KO. I don't even wow. think the crit mattered. I mean, it definitely helps. I'm not sure if it was the- Depends on the roll exactly. of the move, so it definitely helped a little bit, but for sure that just was an amazing showing from Eric, bringing yeah. out the Coridon. The Coridon ditto even was just absolutely beautiful to watch. A lot of mind games on both sides. Yeah, and you can even see a little bit of the disbelief on Eric's face there that last turn. Again, he was still, um, in my opinion, at least favorite to win out just based off of the positioning and uh, the, how things were kind of going through there, but Honestly, wow, uh, Koridon, definitely a beast of a Pokemon. I think so for sure. Definitely, I'm trying to think of matchups that it would be bad in in the current. Against Koridon, I, I even over there. I think talking, Spectre I think it's just would be the only thing that it would have some trouble against. But then yeah. that's why you have the rest of the team, and that's why you would have the helping hand to try and make it a little bit more of a support. Is mod. Shadow Rider gonna withstand a Fire Terra eruption, <laughs> Scarf, Typhlosion true. in Sun? With helping hand, exactly. I don't think so, ladies and, and gentlemen. And if that Typhlosion doesn't even have to use the eruption, it could go Shadow Ball. It has a few other options in its it, move set. It'd probably be safer. Actually, actually, no, you're right. Because if just you're, take it down. we saw like, yesterday Wide Guard being such a huge threat. You know, a Pokemon like um, Ice Rider is kind of you know shoehorned into only using the spread move. That's just your only real threat. But a Pokemon like Coridon, it kind of specializes in just so much flexibility. You could even run Earthquake if you really want to, and you can get so much done. There's so many Pokemon that are good with it. You don't have to dedicate your whole team to protecting it like so many teams are kind of forced into it's just such a flexible Pokemon you can do yeah, a lot it's, it. it's kind of just more of a flex pick than like the hyper carry that Caliwix is a very strong Pokemon as well don't get mm -hmm. me wrong but now we're seeing Coridon going up there being a little bit more of a flexible pick but now looking at the teams I just want to comment on Sun as mm -hmm. there's so many good options with Sun grass types benefit from, from it fire yep. types benefit from it yep. like so many Pokemon benefit from Sun and there's not that much competition with weather nowadays unless mm -hmm. you're up against a Calyrex that are uh, wants Pelipper. the Pelipper maybe for the wide guard or like unless there's snow or rain there's not that much that's gonna stop you there not at all and even now I'm just thinking a little bit more about the common threats in this format um, again I don't want to go too hard on this Coridon thing <laughs> exactly. but I, I think it is just such a smart pick where what it lets you do what it lets you get away with and the opportunities that it opens up for you um, very excited to see where people take this and uh, very excited to see what we're gonna be seeing in round three exactly round three is gonna be coming up very soon so we have Coridon matchups and so much more so don't go anywhere we're gonna throw it to a very quick break